Good afternoon YouTube. Um, in this video I wanted to give you the opportunity to see some more about the washi paper I use on my Midori Traveller. Uh, my last Midori video uh, met with a very good response so thank you very much to all of those who have watched and commented on that video. One of the requests that I've gotten, uh, or certainly one of the comments that I've gotten quite a lot, is about the origami or washi paper that I use to cover my Midori inserts. So in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about the paper that I've used, show you some of the ones I've done in the past, and hopefully give you a slightly better or a more close-up view of the washi paper, uh, now that I've gotten a little bit more used to using my uh, GoPro camera. So we're going to start by looking at uh, my Midori Traveller. Uh, I showed you this a little bit in the previous video. And as you can see there, I've got a couple of postcards that are pending uh, postage through the mail. Those are from trips that I've done with work recently. Now, as I showed you in my last video, my Traveller's Notebook, I have my uh, multi-pocket insert that I made from a very simple brown manila envelope but it's the washi paper that I want to talk about in particular today now I've actually got two inserts slipped in here at the moment because I've been reading back through some of my notes from previous but what you can see here is two different inserts covered in two different types of paper now I'm not entirely sure how well the camera is going to pick up on this I'm just going to try and get some more light down onto the paper and what I want you to hopefully see is maybe some of the texture in the paper and some of the detailing in the paper. Now this right hand side piece, the, uh, the Sakura, uh, the cherry blossom, you can see that when you look at it very flat, it's, yes, it's a nice pretty paper. As soon as the light catches it though, hopefully you can see all the gold flecks and the gold um, paint or print coming through on that paper highlighting the design and it's this attention to detail from this hand laid or handmade Japanese origami paper this is really what I love the kind of tactile feel to this so if we have a look inside you can see how I've attached the paper you can see I've quite simply just glued the paper onto the card cover of the Midori uh, insert. And I haven't been overly neat about this. Nothing about the Midori is particularly neat and tidy. It's all very rustic. It's all very rough and ready. And to be quite honest, it, it doesn't bother me. The insides of my notebooks often get covered with, in this case, some stamps. Um, or photographs of friends and family or just anything that happens to catch my fancy uh, at one point I was putting a little fold-out calendar just so I could keep track and depending on how often you go through your notebooks would obviously depend on how often this needs to be changed now that's the two that I'm carrying at the moment let's have a look at some of the previous ones We'll take a look at these. Uh, you see there's quite a few that I've gone through over the years. I'm going to start with the Sakura or the Cherry Blossom. This is a very similar design to the one I'm carrying at the moment. In fact I think it may be exactly the same design. Uh, very similar. So blue-grey background, gold background. <clears throat> the Cherry Blossom design is actually my personal favourite but uh, there you go. So, again, similar kind of covering, just the paper glued and folded over the cardstock on the inside, folded it over. In this case, uh, the first couple of times I was doing this, I did like to have everything nice and neat. And then in the back cover as well, well, in actual fact, the back cover of this one, I've glued the fly sheet down onto the back. I can't actually remember why that was, but something must have happened and I've also attached just a little world map with some time zones. At that particular time I was traveling a lot all over Europe and it, this seemed to be appropriate to put on the inside of the notebook. Now if we move on to one of the others, uh, here we can see an swirl or umbrella design 
as I think it was called. This is largely black and grey, but as you can see, it still has that gold printing to it. I'm hope again, I'm hoping the camera can pick this up on the light. Now, this one had a slightly bit more use. Again, I started by gluing a calendar insert onto the inside there. A couple of important dates marked. Again, the fly sheets, photographs of families and friends. And again, very much on the back, we've got folded over, glued down. And rather than sticking anything on the back like I've done in the past, I, I've just included a couple of pictures. Moving on, <coughs> a very different design this time. When I'm buying these uh, washi paper sheets, I'm often buying these from eBay, and the majority of these are coming in from Japan. eBay was a very good source of these initially. Over the last year or so, I haven't been looking as much, and I'm finding that availability is starting to dry up a little. It is getting harder and harder to find larger sheets of washi paper. The standard packets of origami paper that you can buy, let me just show you a pack here, I've got some. Standard packs like this just comes <clears throat> in a bit of plastic with a cardboard backing. These are fine for making origami models and I keep a couple of sheets in this in the back of my notebook. But to do the covers you do need a much larger sheet of paper. Now, these Midori notebooks, once they've been opened up, are, again, quite narrow, but the actual dimensions here are very close to A4 paper size, which means if you're buying washi paper, you need to buy slightly larger than A4. That way you can fold the edges over, as I've talked about. Now, finding A4 sheets of washi paper isn't actually that difficult, but A4 will go edge to edge which gives me very little room for error. Gives me no ab ability to fold the paper over, only on the, on the length. So trying to find uh, a decent supply of washi paper has been getting harder and harder. And I'm down to my last couple of sheets. This is one of my favorite designs. I love the black and gold, mainly because it ties in with the kind of color scheme that I've chosen for my Midori. Um, black notebook, black pen, gold highlights, gold accents. So this always went really nicely in the Midori. And again, very rustic. I really didn't spend much time finishing this one, just folded it over. And this particular one was an A4 sheet because it goes edge to edge. There is no fold over from underneath. So if we go to the back again, there's some just a, a homemade card pocket with some details in here, business cards, a couple of receipts, luggage tags. Um, again, I've got to be quite careful what I show you here because it's not always just personal information. There is some uh, telephone numbers and such from colleagues that I obviously don't want to be going out on the internet. So if you do find little blurry sections, you know exactly what those are about. Okay, moving on to one of the others. <clears throat> For this particular notebook, I was a bit lazy. <laughs> I actually didn't have any washi paper at the time. I had run out and I was waiting for an order to come through from eBay. So I just put the plain card notebook into the, um, into the Midori. And over the course of a few weeks and months, I was receiving items in from all over the world. Um, majority of which were eBay purchases. So I decided to steam off the stamps and just stick them to the outside. So we've got Norway, um, UK stamps there, stamps from the Ukraine. I'm not entirely sure what I bought from the Ukraine. Can't quite remember. Some stamps from Hong Kong. And then on the back, some luggage stickers uh, from my trip to Oslo in Norway. And again, Royal Mail, Royal Mail uh, postage stamps on the back. So this one was, I suppose, very under-customised. I did have a, a little off-cut of washi paper that I just glued to the inside just to give it a little bit of something. That was done a little bit later on. And that's just been trimmed to the exact dimensions of the book, which is why it's kind of uh, peeling up around the edges. Cute little bunny design. And on the back cover, again, I've done exactly the same thing. <clears throat> 
uh, in this case not so well glued to the inside. The final one, this one has seen a little bit more action. This was not actually washi paper. This was a piece of gift wrapping paper, handmade paper, that was purchased from Paper Chase, um, which is a stationary, I suppose a high-end stationary retailer here in the UK. And I was actually out shopping with a very old friend of mine uh, as I was visiting Newcastle. We saw this and I had to buy it. In actual fact, what I did was I bought this to make some origami models and this was a offcut that she returned to me just purely for me to cover one of my notebooks with. Now you can see that there's some staining here. Um, the blue is coming through. It's a very nice uh, lagoon or teal blue. But here you can see that there's some darker patches and staining on the paper. Now I don't mind this at all but this staining was from the glue you can use a normal glue stick like a Pritt stick or a Yoohoo stick or something like that the problem is is that doesn't give you enough grab on this and as you open and close the notebook you find that the paper will start to buckle where it hasn't been glued down properly so what I've been using to do all of my notebook covering is some aerosol craft adhesive so this is just a can of spray adhesive that I got from the hobby shop. It's almost empty. And this is the kind of stuff you can use for model or mounting photographs onto card or I think carpet spraying. Uh, if you're gluing carpet down onto uh, or carpet tiles down onto a floor, you use a similar kind of thing. But because this glue carries a solvent, it's stained. And what you've got here is the solvent actually seeping into the paper almost instantly. The glue sitting on the surface quite nicely, but it stained the paper. Initially, I was horrified by this. Over time, I've actually come to like it. Because the darker areas highlight the gold printing a little, well, much nicer. Now moving to the inside, again I have glued this one down, you can see where it's been folded over in the corners, I haven't been too neat with the trimming, and I've just glued a calendar on the inside. On the rear of the notebook again I've just got some photos that have been stuck down, these are just uh, photo prints of a um, comic that I used to follow in a mountain bike magazine. For those of you who know Mint Source, for those of you who do not, you're missing out. So very rough paper. And you can see I've left the unfinished edge that the paper came with. It was a sheet of handmade paper. It wasn't trimmed or um, tuck, cut to a specific uniform size. When you buy this, you buy it in a roll. Um, sorry, you buy it by the sheet and they just roll it up for you. And it is a very unfinished handmade edge. And that's the, the last of the finished covers that I've got here. Um, <clears throat> And again, the two that I have in the notebook already. So you can see there's certainly some variety in the paper used. Let me just uh, frame these a little better. There's certainly some variety here in the paper used. When I buy these, or when I used to buy these over the internet, I would just pick a few designs that I like the look of. Now it's getting harder and harder to find these certainly over eBay so I'm gonna to have to start trawling around so I'm kind of limited to what I've got left which is not a huge amount and that's what the second part of this video is going to be about what I would like to do is it is Tuesday the 27th of May today uh, we're about half past two in the afternoon here in the UK and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post this video up tonight and I have a couple of sheets of paper in my supply and this is literally the last of my washi paper and what I want you guys to do is to tell me which which sheet you would like to see used so in the comments for this video if you can leave a comment to say which of these designs you would like to see and at some point this week uh, later in the week over the next couple of days I'll give you some time to, to leave your comments but by the weekend, I want to actually do uh, the covering of that notebook. 
So I'm going to take you through the, the designs I have available and just comment or vote in some way and tell me what you'd like to see covered. And then what I'll do is hopefully this weekend or when I get back from my first trip uh, next weekend, I'm going to do another video where I will actually cover the notebook and I'll take you through the steps that I do and you can see the paper going on. So a little bit of audience participation, if you will. So let me take you through the papers that I have. These are the last two sheets of the larger sized washi paper that I have. So you can see that these were very unfinished. The printing doesn't go directly to the edge. And these are the ones that had the gold uh, embossing included. So these came from the same supplier that I bought these uh, Sakura sheets from. She had a variety of Sakura designs. And these are the last two that I have left in this style. So you can see this is... I don't know if you can hear. It's quite rough paper. Hand-laid paper, handmade paper like this. It's a very fine pulp that washi paper is made from because origami paper has to hold a crease very, very sharply. Um, the art in origami is not just making the model, but it's the perfecting of the model. And the sharpest, most perfect crease is always part of that. So this is very, very fine pulped paper, very, very fine fibres, which means it takes a crease very well. And it gives it a very soft, very tactile feel. I described this in the past as very much akin to a facial tissue or a Kleenex. A very, very soft feeling, but it is strong. And if I try to tear a piece of it, I'm just going to bring this close to the camera, you can see that it's not actually tearing, it's just pulling the fibres apart. Now, I'm not too sure where we are here on the camera. I'm going to get this as close as I can. But you can see there that it's not actually tearing the paper, but it's just separating the fibres out. I'll try and zoom in on this in post-production. So very, very fine paper. Very, very soft. Beautifully textured. The printing process sometimes will emboss the paper. So you do get some raised ridges around some of the coloured areas. And in this case also we've got the gold ink that's been printed on there as well. So this is one of the designs. I have another of the uh, basic Sakura designs. You saw the grey background, you saw the gold background, this is now a green background. Same paper as you've seen in, the, in some of my other notebooks. So a green background with the cherry blossom print on there. <coughs> And now we come to the paper that I picked up from a different supplier. These are, as you can see, a little bit smaller. And these are actually A4 sized sheets. And this will obviously cause a problem. Because my Midori notebook, we have one here, you will see fits perfectly edge to edge. Which means I have no overlap to fold over the cover. So when I glue this down, and because it's a contact adhesive, the minute this touches the paper, that's it. It grabs. The only way, place I'm going to have the ability to fold over is going to be on the long edge of the notebook. So this bottom edge is going to be quite loose. Now that's not ideal, certainly not my preferred way to do this, but you take what you can get. So we have another cherry blossom design, this time with a black background. Again we have some gold printing on this. Again this is has a slightly embossed or raised texture due to the printing process. We have a crane design. Red background, again with the Sakura or the Cherry Blossom. Again, a lot of gold printing used in this particular design. Again, I'm hoping the camera can pick this up. So we have the crane... Uh, is it a crane or a heron? I'm pretty sure it'll be a crane. So the crane design we have another cherry blossom design, this time with a blue background, some waves and some butterflies. So these are the three types, oh sorry, the three sheets of paper I have left. I'm just going to uh, lay these out so you can see them all. So we have the beige cherry blossom, we have the green cherry blossom, we have black cherry blossom, we have red cherry blossom, and we have blue cherry blossom. So I will leave it up to the, the viewers here. Leave me a comment. 
let me know which of these you would like to see covering one of my notebooks and the most popular one is the one that I will use for my next insert. I will give you uh, at least until the weekend so run about four or five days to leave your comments hopefully in, you'll be able to get it get your comments in as quickly as possible and come the weekend whoever or sorry whichever of these gets the most votes that's the one I'll go ahead and cover and I'll shoot a full video showing the covering process so thank you very much for watching do leave your comments do leave your votes and I'll speak to you again soon on the next video.